Welcome, my dear friends. Myself, Professor Dr. Rajendra Deshpande, would like to welcome you all in my Ayurveda Academy YouTube channel. Myself is Professor Dr. R. R. Deshpande. I am MD in Ayurvedic Medicine and MD in Ayurvedic Physiology, that is Kaya Chikitsa and Kriya Sharir. For paid online consultation, or paid online classes, you can definitely WhatsApp me on 9226810630. My dear friends, today's topic is uh, one of the type of the fever that is encephalitis. Encephalitis is a very serious disease and it needs the hospital management, encephalitis. It may be the related with the brain cells, but it may be the meningitis, so the meningitis and encephalitis should be managed into the hospital. Meningitis is more common in general medical practice. Encephalitis is comparatively rare. But for the academic purpose, now we are seeing the different types of the fevers for the subject of Kaya Chikitsa. Can you see? This is the lecture of Kaya Chikitsa. This is the subject for fourth year BAMS. So BAMS students kindly make attention that this question can be asked for LAQ, long answer question, or it can be for SAQ, short answer question. This lecture is based on the CCIM syllabus. Paper one, part B, point number one is related with the fever and this is expected that the students must know the different causes of the fevers and different types of the fevers. So nearly 10 to 11 short videos I am uploading as a Kaya Chikitsa lecture. So this will uh, suffice the need of the modern knowledge. Okay, so let us start to discuss about encephalitis causes, symptoms and as well as management. What is encephalitis? Encephalitis, can you see I T R S? Whenever there is this suffix, hmm, I T I S, the last point, then that indicates the inflammation. I T S means inflammation. Simple examples I can give tonsillitis, inflammation of tonsils, appendicitis, inflammation of appendix, bronchitis, inflammation of bronchial tree. So this is encephalitis inflammation of the brain. Common cause of encephalitis is viral infection. In severe cases of encephalitis, this disease can be life-threatening. So very serious disease, the patient should be immediately admitted in the hospital and be treated with intravenous higher antibiotics or Manitol like substances where it can reduce the inflammation and uh, brain tension. So what are the symptoms of encephalitis? Sometimes, very rarely, there are no symptoms or mild flu-like symptoms like headache, fever, muscular and joint pains, fatigue or weakness. The main is fever, remember. And the, as this is related with brain, there should be headache, common sense. Huh? So fever and headache. In meningitis also, there is a fever, high fever and headache, very severe headache. In serious cases, there may be confusion, agitation or hallucinations. What is mean by hallucination? The patient hears the voice which is not existing. Huh? So it's like a, uh, you, you can just imaginary type of this uh, feelings. Okay, Convulsions may be there, loss of sensation or paralysis in certain areas of the face or body. So remember, this is a brain part. So paralysis, paresis is very common. Muscular weakness, double vision, perception of foul smells such as the burned meat or rotten eggs, problems with the speech, that is slurring speech, problems with the hearing, and there may be loss of consciousness. So drowsiness, semi-conscious, deep conscious, and coma. This can occur in encephalitis. In infants and young children, there may be bulging in the fontanelles of the skull in infants. 
there will be nausea and vomiting body stiffness excessive crying poor feeding or not waking for a feeding and irritability will be seen in the infants okay now the causes commonest cause of encephalitis is viral infections of course there are some cases where you will get the bacterial infections as well but most of the time non infectious inflammatory conditions can cause encephalitis now there are different uh, causes and types primary encephalitis this occurs when a virus or other infectious agent directly infect the brain so the main uh, target organ is a brain the infection may be concentrated in one area of the brain or may be wide spread areas in the brain primary infection may be a reaction of a virus which had been inactive that is latent after previous illnesses now secondary or post infectious encephalitis there will be a faulty immune system reaction in response to an infection elsewhere in the body remember elsewhere in the body not primary focus is not brain primary focus is other organ of the body secondary encephalitis often occurs 2 to 3 weeks after the initial infection rarely secondary encephalitis occurs as a complication of live virus vaccination now this is the virus herpes simplex virus there are two types of herpes simplex virus hsv either type can cause encephalitis that is hsv type 1 or hsv type 2 hmm? hsv type 1 is usually responsible for cold sores or fever blisters around your mouth remember hsv type 1 hsv type 2 commonly causes genital herpes encephalitis caused by hsv 1 is rare but it has the potential to cause significant brain damage or very rarely death as well encephalitis causes let us talk about different viruses epstein barr virus epstein barr virus cause of encephalitis which is commonly causing the mononucleosis uh, monocytes mononucleosis second varicella zoster virus which commonly causes the chicken pox and shingles third enteroviruses which include the polio viruses and next is coxsack coxsack virus which usually cause an illness with fluid like symptoms eye inflammation and abdominal pain so these are the different types of viruses which can cause encephalitis the powassan virus is a well known tick transmitted virus which causes encephalitis in the united states that is america and canada symptoms usually appear about a week after exposure to the virus next rabies virus infection with the rabies virus which is usually transmitted by a bite from an infected animal causes a rapid progression to encephalitis once symptoms begins so these are the different viruses which can cause the encephalitis okay common childhood infections i am sorry common childhood infections which can also cause like for example measles rubella mumps and german measles that is rubella these causes the secondary type of the encephalitis so these causes are now rare because of the availability of the vaccination for these diseases okay next risk factor what can be the uh risk factors for the encephalitis number 1 age some types of encephalitis are more prevalent 
or more severe in specific age groups. In general, young children and older adults are at a greater risk of the most types of viral encephalitis. Encephalitis from the herpes simplex virus tends to be common from the age group 20 to 40 in the human being. Next, risk factor of encephalitis, people who have already the HIV or AIDS infection, which are taking immunosuppressive drugs or having another condition causing a compromised or weakened immune system are very much risk for the encephalitis because their immune system is on the lower side. In the risk factor, there is also a certain, what you can say, the geographical predisposing factors. Geographical. Mosquito-borne or tick-borne viruses are common in particular geographical regions in the world. Now, next is the season of the year. Mosquito and tick-borne diseases tends to be more prevalent in the spring, summer, and early fall. Encephalitis, next problem is about complications. This complication is always depend on the age because the causes of the infection, the severity of the initial illness and the time from the disease onset to the treatment. So earliest treatment is the best to avoid the seriousness or fatal like conditions. Huh? So early treatment is early diagnosis and early treatment is a vital point for encephalitis. In most of the cases, People with relatively mild illness recover fastly within few weeks with no longer long-term complications. Now, about the complications, injury to the brain from inflammation can result a number of problems. The most severe cases can result in deep unconsciousness or coma and sometimes also death. Other complications, they also vary much differ in severity. These may persist for months to be, or sometimes the complications can be permanent. Then we persist in fatigue, that is tiredness, weakness or lack of muscle coordination, personality changes, memory problems, paralysis, hearing or vision defects and speech problems, speech impairments. Now what to do to diagnose encephalitis? That is the test. Brain imaging techniques like CT scan or MRI is the first test if symptoms and the patient history suggest the possibility of encephalitis. The images can show you the swelling of the brain or other condition that may cause the symptom like tumor. So make a differential diagnosis, whether it is really, really, really encephalitis or there is a, some, what you can say, the tumor. So we must do the CT or MRI. CSF examination, cerebrospinal fluid, this indicates the infection and inflammation in the brain. If the leukocytosis or the neutrophils are more in the blood as well as in the CSF, can be tested to identify the virus or other infectious agent. Hemogram can also indicate the severity of infection. For example, WBC count, normally 4 to 11,000 per cubic mm, but if it is more than say 25,000, 30,000, 40,000, that also indicates that the, the this infection is very serious. Now, like the heart, heart we do the ECG, but here is the brain. So electroencephalogram, that will show the abnormal patterns in the activity may consistent with a diagnosis of encephalitis, inflammation of brain. Last, very rarely brain biopsy can be done if symptoms are going bad and bad and treatments are having no effect. Treatment for mild cases, bed rest, plenty of fluids, anti-inflammatory drugs like acetaminophen or ibuprofen to relieve the headaches and fever. Antiviral drugs, intravenous like acyclovir or zovirax. Acyclovir or zovirax, this is antiviral medicine. Encephalitis, side effects of the antiviral drugs. So there is a problem with the, using these drugs. There are some side effects, but that are accepted. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle or joint soreness or muscle pain. Rare serious problems may include abnormalities in the kidney or liver function 
or suppression of the bone marrow activity. So appropriate tests are definitely used to monitor the uh, side effects of these antiviral drugs. Supportive management. Apart from the IV antiviral drugs, you can ask uh, the physiotherapist to do the breathing assistance by ventilator. This is done by, the, of course, in ICU. Careful monitoring of breathing and heart function. Intravenous fluids to ensure the proper hydration and appropriate levels of essential minerals like sodium, potassium, manganese, etc. Anti-inflammatory drugs like corticosteroids, like prednisolone. Manitol is the most important drug. Manitol is very, very important for encephalitis to help to reduce the swelling and pressure within the skull. So this is called as a cerebral diuretic. Manitol is very, very important to remember. Anti-convergent medication like phenytoin, the, the, uh, this is a generic name and this is a trade name, dilantin, to stop or prevent the convergence or the seizures. Follow-up therapy with the physiotherapist to improve the strength, flexibility, balance, motor coordination and mobility. My dear friends, I would like to tell you that there are very interesting videos I have uploaded regarding the nervous system examination. Please, please don't miss those three or four videos of nervous system examination. Occupational therapy to develop everyday skills, to use the adaptive products that help with everyday activities. Speech therapy sometimes to relearn muscle control and coordination to produce the speech. Then psychotherapy to learn coping strategies and new behavioral skills to improve the mood disorders or address the personality changes with medication management if necessary. So my dear friends, this was the lecture regarding the encephalitis, which is a part of your Kai Chikitsa subject of fourth year BMS according to CCM syllabus, paper one, part B, point number one, different types of fever we have to know because the LAQ and SAQ is always asked, meningitis, encephalitis, dengue, et cetera, et cetera. I hope you have liked this, you will like this lecture. And remember, these are the educational videos. So disclaimer or Vaidhani Kishara, Kaunsi bhi bimari mein yatha vashak yatha kaal vaidji ke salah lena bhoti jirurut hai. For paid online consultation and paid online classes, you can definitely WhatsApp on 9226810630. And if you are suffering from cerebral palsy, arthritis, motor neuron disease, cancer, that is attention deficit, hyperactive disorders in children, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, any such type of chronic diseases or autoimmune disease, and we want uh, you want the treatment with Ayurveda, definitely WhatsApp on 9226810630 for paid online consultation or paid online BMS classes. My dear friends, I request all of you to like this video, share this video, and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel to get such type of the interesting videos which are useful for your examinations as well as useful for your medical general practice. So thank you very much. And I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye-bye.